All right, hey, what's up guys? Riley here from becominganelectrician.com. In this video, I wanna talk about different residential boxes that you may be seeing in a home or in a condo setting. Now, I think I have pretty much most boxes that you generally see, um, and I just wanna cover each one just nice and quick in this video, okay? So, before we get into the video, definitely check out my free book I have for you guys by going to becominganelectrician.com forward slash subscribe, and you can enter in your name and email, and I'll send you the book for free. Okay, so there is some boxes here which are commercial boxes, and essentially the difference between commercial and residential boxes is there really isn't a difference, except it's just kind of use case. So for example, if you are gonna be, you know, bending pipe or something, and you only need to pull a couple, a couple wires, you might use a, a shallow four x four, for example. But if you wanna be using this in a residential setting, it's kind of annoying because now you, you know, now you need certain connectors, and now you need more parts, where something like this, which is like your basic, you know, uh, plastic box, single gang plastic box, here's our, this, these, these are your connectors essentially, right? Whereas something like this, you have to knock it out, you know, so, all right. So I'll just quickly cover uh, some of these commercial boxes just, just to get them out of the way, but then I wanna cover the residential boxes, okay? So again, this is a shallow four by four. All right, so again, you would be using this if you don't have very, very many wires to run. This is a deep, this is probably your most common kind of four by four, like when you have you know quite a few wires, um, you do something like this. Uh, I don't have a six by six. A six by six is uh, those gray boxes. They're kind of smaller. Uh, those are also very common if you have to run quite a few wires, okay? So those are uh, four by four boxes. Um, I'll quickly cover this one. So this is a range box or a, um, an oven box or a dryer box. It's what we call a four and 11 sixteenths box. These are a special item and they're actually quite expensive. So do not be using these boxes on a job site if it's not for an oven, you know, range or dryer because they are expensive. The reason why they're expensive is because these companies know that homeowners need them and that's why they make them so expensive, okay? So do not be using these as a junction box. Be using those other 4x4s or even a 6x6. Six six. One little pro tip I learned about the oven, you know, for example. So uh, an oven in a range, you know, uh, I usually just call it just like a, an oven, but usually people call it a range, right? Which is, um, I believe it's your um, oven as well as a cooktop. Um, but when you actually have your plug, L is for laundry when it comes to the plug, all right? So someone taught me that. L is for laundry, okay? Whereas the other one is the 40 amp plug for your oven, and they are straight. Whereas when you plug in the other one, it has a little L shape and an L for laundry for, for that 30 amp plug, okay? So again, that was a four and 11 sixteenths. Do not be using it for normal splicing. All right, so I'll just quickly go through these octagons. Now, in a commercial setting, depending on if you are um, putting boxes onto a stud, many times these have a strap on them, okay? And the strap is really awesome because it makes it really easy to mount. It makes it really secure. Um, these are, you know, a strapless and you gotta put your screw through these. Um, and sometimes the screw doesn't go in very good and these things are all loose. So these typically you wanna be using them uh, like let's say on concrete, you would take your Sharpie and you would, uh, you know, you'd mark it. And then let's see if it, yeah, I have a little mark on my hand. But so that's what you do. You know, you'd have your mark there. You will mark, mark. That's for your Sharpie. You pull it out, you make your hammer drill. You put your blue inserts or whatever inserts you have. I don't like the blue inserts. They don't hold very good. Check out what's called Alex Anchors, A-L-E-X, Aluminum Expansion Anchors. Um, so again, this is more of like a commercial setting box, okay? Uh, same thing here. So, you know, if we're gonna be bending pipe and if you wanna maybe put a light on here, that's what maybe you'd use this for. Now, if you need more wires to go through, this is a deep octagon, all right? Okay, so I just wanna get rid of the metal boxes. So um, now, I actually purchased the wrong one. This one is for a um, BX, arm armored cable. So for example, this is armored cable, right? Um, so you can see that these connectors are for an armored cable right here. Um, and make sure you're always using an anti-short with these. They're those little red things that to kind of just go in um, to, you know, so that you don't wreck the wire. So anyway, so this is for, you know, essentially this is like metal wire, or you can, uh, you know, take these off and it gives you more room in your box. You can use it for uh, pipe, 
or uh, if you need to put like a 90 on there. But many times, you know, it's all about doing things as cheap as possible. So essentially you would just take this knockout out, loosen this, you can put the wire in there with the uh, with your anti-short. But again, um, sometimes they sell these and it's for uh, your uh, residential wire, your, your NMD wire, you know, wire like this, right? This is like your typical standard, you know, 14-2 house wire. And sometimes metal boxes have a different style of clamp, which can clamp down on these, on, on this wire, but make sure that you are not clamping it down too tight because you can pinch the wire, okay? All right, so now I just wanna cover residential boxes, okay? So these are your most common type of residential boxes for light switches, plugs, okay? Stuff like that. Um, one has big ears, one has small ears. I really don't think there's any difference out there. No one has ever kind of told me there's really a difference. Um, I've always kind of liked these ones. Sometimes you can kind of cut them if you need to, um, you know, like if it doesn't fit. But uh, yeah, one thing I wanna say is usually I don't like using nails. So sometimes you work with a certain company and like they try to cheap out and they use nails instead of screws. I always like to use like uh, eight, by, eight by one screws. They're just, they just hold better. Um, nails typically will always kind of loosen eventually. Um, one other thing you can also do with these is um, sometimes we gotta break the tabs off. So you can either use your pliers and you can break them. You can also put it on a stud. So for example, if this was a stud, you just put it like this and you can actually just hit it, boom, like nice and hard. And um, these tabs will break off for you. So why you would wanna break off the tabs is because when you're on a job site, so in a residential setting, it's not as big of an issue, but when you are in a commercial setting, you always gotta be looking at the prints, right? So again, you guys can visit the website and you guys could check my search bar or whatever. Um, I have a category there for prints. I talk to you about uh, architecturals and uh, just different types of prints that you should be looking at. One of them is all about drywall depth, right? So you never wanna have your, your box sticking out of the wall, okay? So if you're, so imagine this is the wall. It's okay to have your box behind the wall because you can put inserts in or whatever to meet code. But if your box is sticking out of the wall like this, so again, imagine my hand is the wall and the box is sticking out like this much, I'm telling you it is the worst to try to fix. So, um, but anyway, so this is just a single gang box plastic. They're really awesome because uh, first of all, it's not metallic, which means that if your plug ever does touch it, it doesn't short out. Like, uh, you know, for example, like a device box. Many times if we have a plug, you can tape around the plug so that it doesn't short out. You know, that's like the worst kind of maintenance call. So plastic, awesome for that way. Um, you just use these. So uh, only one wire goes in each one and then you just bond it, right? So again, this is bonding, not grounding. And then you have, you're just, just your single device. Okay, so that is a single gang box. Now uh, in recent years, um, we have, seen these okay and uh so this is like uh your 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 outside plugs for your uh for your vapor barrier um and then when they're insulating they will put their poly all across here uh back in the day we used to use a, a vapor boot which you can see right here so uh again i'm not sure if, if uh if these are still code or whatever uh, i know that before i stopped being an electrician these were coming in these are awesome because <laughs> these were these were so annoying to use and so just quickly I'll show you so how how it worked for a single gang box again you only use these on outside walls and uh, so just like that okay um, but nowadays you can see that they just have a vapor box like this and they're just so awesome I guess we used to call them foam boxes another reason why these are so awesome is you could also cut the ears off of them and um, if you ever needed to cut a hole in the wall and stick it through so again, you cut the ear off and you can slide it through and you can screw right into here. So it was just like, it became a really versatile box on the job site that um, when I first started, it wasn't around. So again, those are for your outside walls, okay? All right, so let's just talk about a double gang. So this is just like the single gang, except now you have two devices. So you can have a switch and a plug or two switches or two plugs, um, all right? And so with these, you can just screw them on. Usually it's nice to put, uh, you know, your two screws in here too, so that it doesn't kind of bend. It's a nice secure box. So you can put your screw, put a screw down here, uh, but then usually, you know, you wanna put two screws in there as well. It's a nice secure hold. And then again with the NMD wire, you know, it just slides right into here, holds it super good. 
I really, really liked, you know, using these plastic boxes. And same thing, so back in the day, we used to use one of these if it was on an outside wall, right, for that vapor barrier, but also these can also be a foam box as well. And again, you just wanna use uh, the foam boxes or these on the outside wall. Uh, the foam boxes because they are more expensive, right? So these are for the inside walls where they're more affordable. All right, so this is a three gang plastic box. And what you need to know about a three gang is that you have to support the other side now. So as soon as you get to three gang or bigger, you're gonna have to start putting uh, a piece of wood that is the same size as the wall. So you can see that this, this piece of wood is really small, but imagine it's a two by four wall. You have to be using a two by four, or if it's a two by six. So you put your screw in here, in here, in here, and in here, all right? So four screws on this side, and then you put two screws, boom, boom, and then you got a nice secure hold, okay? So that is a code rule uh, for my understanding. Um, again, if it's a two by four wall, it's gotta be a two by four. If it's a two by six wall, so whatever the length, you know, the, the width of the wall, it's gotta be that for that support. And that is three gang or bigger, okay? All right, so now I just wanna talk to you about uh, an octagon. So an octagon is for a light, okay? So you gotta make sure that an octagon is for a light because it's round and typically a light cover covers this nice and clean, okay? Uh, <laughs> never use a four by four for a light. If you do, uh, you will have holes around there. Like uh, I'll show you a picture I saw on a job site. Someone did a smoke detector. It looked so bad. Um, but yeah, so that's what this is for. The biggest thing with lights, again, is the drywall depth. And again, if you look at your prints, your prints will always tell you, especially on a commercial job site, if there's two layers of drywall, if there's three layers of drywall, it'll also tell you how thick that drywall is, right? So for example, is it like um, two layers of half inch and one layer of five eighths, or is it like a layer of plywood and five eighths or whatever? So again, if this is my hand, you never wanna have the box outside of the wall. You always wanna have it at least behind the wall. If it's behind the wall, you're way safer. Again, then you can use an insert to meet code. Um, you obviously want to try to be flush. That's always the goal. But if you had a choice to screw up, you want to be in the wall rather than outside of the wall. Again, the same thing applies here that um, you can break the tabs off. Again, I would just put this up to like a stud just like this and then you hit it right here with your pliers and it just snaps off, right? You can also twist them off too, but I usually find it's just a one hit deal. Usually they both break and you just turn it over, just give it a nice little whack there too and the tabs break off and it allows you to get your depths, okay? So if I show you here, um, I think back in the day, uh, they used to show uh, the actual drywall depths, uh, but you can see here, right? So again, always use your tape measure to measure um, you know, the depths. So you can see where, where my thumb is. This is half inch. When we get up to that other line right here, you know, one inch. So you know, sometimes you gotta put it all the way down. And you know, um, so again, always look at your prints and it will tell you how thick is the drywall. But so an octagon box, we're using it for a light, essentially. Again, it has the plastic inserts, which is awesome for NMD, um, Lumex, you know, home wire. Um, now let's move on to this one here. All right, so this box here is a pretty common residential box. Um, you would just kind of put it up to the stud. You can hit it, these kind of uh, insert into the stud, into the wood, wooden stud. And then um, you would just put your two, you know, two screws in up top two screws at the bottom. It's a pretty nice tight uh, fit, but honestly, I always try to avoid metal boxes in a residential setting. The plastic boxes are just like way easier and more enjoyable to use. Uh, but you can see that these uh, connectors are like um, what, you know, supports that when you strap down the wire, these can actually do residential wire, okay? So you can just open up the tab, you can slide it in, and you can actually tighten these down on uh, NMD. But again, just be careful because if you're using your drill, you can really tighten down. Uh, but I, again, I just wanted to show you that you can see that this one here, um, this is for armored cable only. Whereas here, you can see that this can, all, can actually be for Lumex or NMD wire, all right? So again, I usually don't recommend using these in like a residential setting. All right, so I'm just gonna move on to this one right here. So this is like a device box. It's called uh, an 1110. It's probably one of the most common boxes that we honestly use as like an electrician when it comes to uh, like in maintenance rooms, if we have to just do like a, a plug, we just kind of pipe into it. We just have like a plug or a switch or something. Um, one thing to know about these is again, um, when you are installing your plug, you can, uh, really short out easy, and you just want to make sure that if you are inserting 
uh, pipes or connectors, you know, I always typically try to think about um, where I'm going to place them. Like, you know, if you, if you uh, have like right here, maybe you can kind of be hard on like the plug or whatever. So kind of like uh, where you're entering the box, I always think about that. Same here with uh, the bond. Uh, you know, for example, if I had to pipe it, maybe I would do it like this. And the pipe would come into the bottom. That way I can come up and bond nice and easy. Whereas if it was like this, you know, it's just kind of annoying. You have a connector there. Might be hard to get like the lock ring in, et cetera, et cetera. So always just kind of think ahead that way. Be way easier just to have like a free area if you want to put your connector on. And if nothing's up top, then you're good to go. So again, this is called an 1110. That's what I've always uh, heard it. Oh, there you go. Uh, 1110 right there. That's where they get it, okay? Um, I'm not sure like what they actually call it. I've just always hear of like the, the names on the job site when, you know, kind of like if someone would say, go get an 1110, right? Um, I wanna talk about this box right here. So this is called an easy box. This is most commonly known for if you're gonna be doing a renovation and you just wanna add a plug into the wall. However, we very commonly use an easy box if we are installing a plug into an island. So for example, like in your kitchen, if you have an island or a peninsula, that uh, a plug is on like the very, very end, right? So, you know, so sometimes, many times these are in there. Uh, these things are pretty annoying to work with, especially when you uh, put a GFI in here. You know, GFIs are big. They are getting a little smaller, which is cool, but still like, you know, these things are a little bit annoying and uh, your wire placement and how you wrap your wires around, you really gotta think about that. All right, so just a little rundown on how an easy box works, okay? So the first thing to know is that it is the size of a credit card or like a bank card or any type of card. That's typically what we would use to trace out and then you, you can cut it and then this would go right in, okay? So how it works is you can see that the screws are loose and you would just push down, okay? You can see that this allows it to slide into that hole, okay, because they're loose. Um, now you should be getting your wire in here if you wanna prepare it, okay? Then you can enter it into the box, you would push down, push up. So now that, now that your wire is in there, you can now tighten it down, which will tighten down on your wire. Be careful, don't crank it down. These things strip a lot, all right? So don't, don't, don't strip it, it's not worth it, okay? So you want it to be half decent tight, but I'm telling you that they strip easy. And, but you wanna tighten both of them down and that will lock it into place, which means that these ears, now we can tighten this. So for example, imagine uh, this is the cabinet or something. So for example, it goes in to the cabinet, slid in, we open it up, now we would tighten the screws down and it would lock into the cabinet, all right? Or, uh, you know, wherever you're installing this. And that's an easy box, okay? So again, typically we are using them in renovations, but uh, very often we're using them in, um, in condos when it comes to uh, island plugs and peninsula plugs and stuff like that, all right? These are also not cheap, they're pretty expensive. And the reason they're expensive is because they know that homeowners many times need to do a renovation to add a plug, right? Okay, so the last box I have here is called a pancake box. Now, one thing for you guys to know about these is that you're only allowed uh, one wire in them, okay? So you can, you can have a 14.3 in here for a smoke detector, um, but you're only allowed one wire. And, though, and then obviously like you're allowed like the one splice, like if you're gonna put a light in here or something like that, but you're only allowed, I believe, one wire in a pancake box. Um, again, if this is um, on, like in the ceiling, you know, like on, on like the very, very top floor where you need the vapor barrier, again, you're gonna have to put poly around here or something like that uh, so that it's vapor barriered. And uh, that's it, okay? So that's all the boxes that we went through. So a bit of a longer video. Hopefully you guys learned some stuff. There's a lot of information in there. Um, but typically those were the boxes I've seen a lot on a job site. Again, when it comes to a commercial setting, very often when it came to like a four x four, the one with the straps are just like way more enjoyable to use, you know, cause it has a strap, you wrap it around, you fold it around, you put your screws in, you get a really, really nice, uh, you know, secure box. If you were gonna install these onto a stud just as is, it's always kind of hard to get it lined up flush on the stud. Um, and then, you know, a lot of times it's hard to get them tight, but that's it. So if you guys got questions, you guys can leave comments below or if you have any suggestions for upcoming videos. Again, like I said, I wanna get into some kind of math stuff with you guys soon, uh, but I already wrote this article on the website about, you know, different residential 
uh, electrical boxes. So again, check out the website. There's lots of articles, lots of details, and hey, leave a comment. Leave a comment on the website. I'd appreciate that. I will reply to you guys. Um, so again, if you guys want to stay updated with the website, you guys can download my free book for apprentice electricians. Just go to becominganelectrician.com forward slash subscribe. If you want to get new videos, you can subscribe here on YouTube. Thanks for checking out the video and I'll talk to you in the next one.